Hi everyone, my name is Sergio Ramos Martin and I'm defending my PhD thesis Knowledge Extraction and Representation Learning for Music Recommendation and Classification directed by Dr. Xavier Serra. Uh, first of all I want to thank the thesis members for being here and reading my thesis and also my supervisor for his advice. Okay, I will start by uh, summarizing the motivation and the introduction uh, regarding the, the title of the, of the thesis, Knowledge Extraction and Representation Learning for Music Recommendation and Classification. First of all, music recommendation. This is the main application of this thesis. And when I was a kid uh, or a teenager, the, my friends typically record a cassette at their homes with music they like, and they give this cassette to me thinking I would like this music and I do, did the same for my friends. So this friend-to-friend -friend way of recommend music has scaled up with the years and now there are uh, many companies that are really making a business out of that, for, out of recommendations. And nowadays there are millions of songs that are just one click away from millions of users. So the challenge is how to recommend this music and in all these enormous catalog, what to recommend and to who. So, but this is not a solved problem, even though these companies are making millions of money. It's not a solved problem because m most of the songs here, you, you, you can see a long tail distribution and most of this, no, a small number of songs are recommended or are interacted by the vast majority of users and a large number of songs, this long tail, is hardly recommended to any user. So this is a problem that has been tried to be solved for years but is not solved already. This is called also the popularity bias. So this is a popularity in the recommender system tend to recommend popular items. So I know it very well because I, I'm here at the very end of the long tail and this is the motivation. I wanted to solve this for me and, and then for the society. And there is another related problem called the cold start, the item called start. So if you have a new item in the system, you don't have any information about what users have uh, may like this item. So this is called the cold start problem. They, daily, uh, music streaming services are ingesting many music, new music, Perhaps a, a new album from an existing artist. This, you can the, the system can use information, other information about the artist, other users that like other releases of the same artist, and can use this information. But perhaps these artists have changed their style, and perhaps you don't want to recommend the new Taylor Swift to the country fans of Taylor Swift. So it's not that easy. Also, there may be a new release of a new totally unknown band that. It's hard to, to recommend, to who recommend that. Also, music in the catalog that is ingested, mu old music that has been ingested already. So all these three are examples of cold start music. And so in recommendation, you can, there is a trade-off between exploitation and exploration. So you can promote more exploitation, so recommend more popular music or music that you are sure the user will engage or try to make the user explore the music. So in this thesis, I'm focusing more on the exploration side. So trying to promote long tail and cold start items. So the most typical approach for recommendation is based on the collective intelligence, on the users. So as the, as the friends, I told the example before. So music that users like may is used to recommend music to other users. This is called collaborative filtering, but these techniques suffer for this popularity bias and tend to recommend more popular items and it's, it cannot be used for cold start items because there is no user information for these new items. Then there is another method that instead of using information about the user, what user like, use information about the items, the features of the items, the audio or the, or the text, the metadata, and try to find similarity between items. This is called content-based methods for recommendation. But collaborative filtering are very good at exploitation and content-based for exploitation. And there is also for exploration, sorry. 
and there is the combination of both methods called hybrid methods and are, these are the methods that I will focus on in this thesis. So there are different kind of content features that we can use. I, when I'm talking here about content features, it may be text, audio, uh, images, not only, not only audio. I am using the recommender system term for content-based recommendations. So, unstructured text is one of the main uh, content features that I want to, to work in this thesis. I worked with, um, the web is full of text that people is talking about music and is writing things about music in music reviews, blogs, web forums, social networks. So a lot of information talking about music, but this information is unstructured. It's made by humans and for humans, and the computers not really understand what is said in this, in this text. It can just uh, look for the words and, and do something. So, and this information is rich. Uh, there is a, you may find gender relation influences, but it's noisy. It's not easy to get all this epistemic potential that have the, the content. Uh, and so it has been sometimes used for recommendation, but not too much. Audio is another source for content recommendation, and it has a lot of potential, audio, because when the human listens to the audio, you, you know a lot of things, the genre, timbre, instruments, but there is a semantic gap between what we understand from the audio and what can be measured on the audio signal. And they have been used for recommendation also, sometimes. Images is another possible content-based feature. So if you look at the cover of an album, for example, you may infer the genre of the album or, or the style, the, the age, when was released this album. So, but there's also a semantic gap between this, what we understand and what the computer see. There is another content feature that are tags. Tags are tidy, are curated by perhaps by experts or by a crowd. Uh, they have been widely used for recommendation. However, tags, you need this expert or this crowd to create this set of tags that annotate the, the music and also the annotations may be limited and there is more information about the music that is not encoded in the text. So for that reason, we focus in this thesis on especially recommending using unstructured text and audio. But also, we can learn these tags from this information, from more raw content, like unstructured text, audio, and images. We can learn the tags, and this is called music classification, and this is another application we are taking tackling in this, and this is useful then, if you have these annotations more tidy, you can use this for recommendation also. So music in between the different genres, the tags that there are, I, I focus on music genres. that are categories that share similar music characteristics and have been used for classifying music since the times uh, of the record stores. Okay, so to resolve these problems, I, I focus on, I started focusing on MIR, it's a music information retrieval community for research. And here, the definition of MIR is a multidisciplinary field of research concerned with the extraction, analysis, and usage of information about any kind of music entity on any representation label. This definition by Marcus Scherl. And here, important, on any representation level. I like that definition because of that, especially, and but if you look into the literature on, on music information retrieval, most of the work follow this pipeline. So you have audio, using audio, most of them. Then you have a feature extraction process where uh, with a combination of audio engineering, uh, psychoacoustic, musical knowledge. So using this, this, this knowledge, you, uh, some algorithms to extract features from the audio and then these features are used in a semantic interpretation step typically using machine learning for classification, regression, <coughs> clustering, whatever. So this is the typically, typically a pipeline. But this feature extraction, if we look it in, into detail, these features that are extracted are typically classified in these three levels, low level features, mid level features, high level features. Low level features let deal with the analysis of the audio directly. Um, there are many different low-level features. Mm, each one of these perhaps is a PhD in itself. So this is a complex process to, 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 to extract all these features. 
mid-level features are based for in low-level features and measurements on the audio and are more related to musical knowledge. And high-level features are more related with the semantic understanding of the audio, like genre, smooth. If we work with text, we may have these three levels of features also. Low-level features, like that we measure directly on the text, work frequencies, concurrence, engrams. Mid-level features, yeah, more related to the morphology of the words, like parts of a speech tags, or high-level features, more related to the semantic understanding of text, the semantic relations, syntactic relations. However, in MIR research, uh, what I found is most of the research is done with low-level features and mid-level features, and very few with high-level features. So, to extract high-level features from text, there is a technique called knowledge extraction, where you get these high-level features or information extraction, also known, and then use for semantic interpretation. So, this thesis, I focus on this knowledge extraction step. So instead of working with audio, I use the text that is written by the people listening the audio, and then I do this process of knowledge extraction. Then I wanted also to use the audio for my recommendations and classification. So the, instead of using the feature extraction and semantic interpretation step, there is another technique called representation learning where you do everything at the same time. So you learn from the audio, and you do the, the classification of the recommendation at the same time. So you avoid also this feature extraction process. So that's it. The introductions, this is the overview of my thesis that wasn't, wasn't a planet from the beginning, I, I may say. I didn't know about representation learning when I started. I started focusing on knowledge extraction, natural language processing, and then applying it to musicology, to recommendation, to classification, and then the, I, I move to the audio and work with representation learning for recommendation and classification. I, I try to simplify this a bit for the presentation and focusing on the applications. So I divided the talk in, in four, four groups. First, I will talk about knowledge extraction uh, with two sections, entity linking and automated knowledge-based construction. Then music recommendation. First, music recommendation with knowledge graph that focus on the promotion of long tail items. And then call star music recommendation. Then music genre classification. And finally, some conclusions. So let's start with entity linking. Entity linking is the task to discover mention of entities in text and link them to a suitable knowledge repository. This is the definition. So, if we have a sentence like this one, and we want to identify who is mentioning this text, Elvis Presley, Guitar Man, and read these are main entities that are in the text. But there is some ambiguity here because this read, what is read? Is one section is Lou Reed, is Jerry Reed. So if we use the context, we may infer that this read is probably. Jerry Reed, that was a guitarist that collaborated with Elvis Presley. So this is entity linking. So we identify them and this can be wide them using a knowledge repository. In, for example, Wikipedia can be this knowledge repository. So we annotate every single entity with the URI of these entities. In this case, Jerry Reed. So we have the text, this can be weighted. So this technique is, is very important in this thesis. I have used it through all, the, all, all my work. There are several state-of-the-art systems like Bubble, PyTagme, and Wikipedia Spotlight that work quite well and are used widely. However, in the music domain, there are some challenges, and these systems don't work that well. So for example, there is some ambiguity. Of, there is ambiguity always in entity linking, but in music, there is some special ambiguity like this. This wither, this was the third wither album that they simply named it Wither. So the album, the artist, so this kind of disambiguation also. Debut is the first international solo studio album by Björk. Led Zeppelin released their debut album 48 years ago. So there are also many album and song names that has common words as names. So it's very difficult to either determine if this is a song name or an album name or this is simply the words that are in text. There is scan research related to entity linking in the music domain. And also knowledge bases are incomplete. So they are mainly biased toward popular artists and Western artists, but there is a lot more of music that is not encoded in the current knowledge bases. So to try to 
to reduce a bit the, the ambiguity of entity linking, we try to combine all the entity linking systems, or these three at least, in this system called Elvis, entity linking both in an integration system where we first homogenize the output of the different systems because every entity linking system may work with a different knowledge base using a different format, so we homogenize them and then do a voting process to see if the three of them agree, there is mm, higher probability that this is correct. The, this. Using this system, we created a linguistic resource called ELMD, that is a data set where we have 13,000 artist biographies with the entities annotated and disambiguated to Wikipedia, to Wikipedia. The entities are album, <coughs> artist, track, and record label. And we did some manual evaluation, and we have a very high precision, so this can be used for, for training an entity linking system or, or for evaluation. This was published in Elbert Conference. Okay, let's move to automated knowledge-based construction. So there is another process in, in technique in natural language processing called relation structure that we use here. This is the process of identifying and annotating relevant semantic relations between entities in text. So for example, this sentence, if we, are, we identify the entities that are in the sentence. We have gorillas, British, Damon Alban, Rule. So, in Howlett. So if we do relation extraction here, we may find a graph like this. So what information is encoded in the text? So for example, between gorillas and Jim Howlett, we have that this band format in. So if we understand this, we may infer this graph, like the representation. So this is a structure information that the computer may understand, and this is a structure. So this is what relation extraction does. So we use relation extraction for the creation of a knowledge base of music automatically. A knowledge base is a repository of knowledge organized in a taxonomic or ontological structure. There are handcrafted knowledge base or semi-automatically created like WordNet, Wikipedia, Babelnet, and fully automatically created like NEL or Reverb. If we see in the music domain, there are some handcrafted knowledge base or databases like music brains of Discogs but there is not a fully automatically created knowledge base, or at least a public, fully created automatically. So we focus on, on this topic. So we develop a process, this process for automatic creation of music knowledge base, a relation instruction process. First, with a syntactic process where we apply dependency parsing. That is a technique that do a syntactic analysis of the sentence, finding the relation, the dependency relation between words. Then we apply a semantic process, applying entity linking and identifying the entities that are present here. Then we integrate the semantic and the syntactic <coughs> processes, combining the nodes of the same entities and collapsing them in the graph, on the dependency graph. And then trying to find the shortest path between these entities in the dependency graph. This becomes our relation label. However, the shortest path is prone to errors. So there may be inconsistencies in what extract many of the relations extracted may be correct, but others are maybe not correct. So we apply a filtering process based on regular expressions of the word lemmas, the dependency functions, and the part of the speech tags. Then we apply a clustering process. What we try to do is to, if we have relations with very similar mean, uh, semantic meaning, like was written by artist, was written by frontman, we try to aggregate them into the same uh, and use the same label for them, like was written by. This helps to simplify the knowledge base and, and reduce the complexity. So finally, we apply another filtering method using a scoring, a confidence measure that is based on the statistical analysis of all the relations with some measures that we, we created uh, in, in the thesis. And we select the, a threshold to, to say if up this score, all the relations are good and the others are not. So we did an experiment to create a knowledge base using this pipeline. We use a set of 30,000 stories about songs that are in the website Song Facts that we wrote. And then we evaluate it with three different evaluations. We evaluate the quality of the relations by, with manual annotation, analyzing if the relations are correct or not. <coughs> the coverage, so comparing what the relations that we are extracting, the information with other knowledge bases, and uh, evaluating in an application, in this case, explaining music recommendations. This was published in the Data Knowledge Engineering Journal. So if we just go to the semantic and syntactic integration step, 
this is the precision we get if we ana manually analyze random uh, relations. But if we apply the filtering process, we see like how the, the precision increase. And if we also apply the scoring, we see how the precision increase. So at the end, we have a quite accurate relations about 0 0.8 uh, precision. Comparing with another uh, state-of-the-art relation structure method, we are a bit higher in, in this specific corpus and in the music domain. So we evaluate the coverage. We see the intersection between the, our knowledge base and music brains and the Wikipedia, the entities that we have in common, and then count the number of relations that we have, the number of relations music brains has, and the number of relations the Wikipedia has. And, and we see that we <coughs> got a lot more of relations. This means that there is a lot of information that is not encoded already in Music Brains or in Wikipedia, and these methods may be useful to populate these ontologies with more knowledge. Also, we did this experiment for explaining recommendations. We think that the, we, we have a graph where, because at the end, this knowledge base is a graph where we have connections between entities in this graph. We have connection between songs in the graph. So we, we can find ways to explain one how is related a song to another song. So we did an exper experiment with that, and we can explain the recommendations using the labels of the of the that we extracted or the original text we from what we construct this knowledge base. So we listen to this example. The Good. I don't know if it's here now. Well, it doesn't matter. So they are very similar. And if we look at in the text, we see that they are so fourth time around was written in response to Norwegian Wood by the Beatles, since it is similar both melodically and lyrically. So this was in the text. If we provide this information to the user when you have this recommendation, maybe helpful. So we did an experiment with 30, 35 subjects, and we see <coughs> that providing this explanation using the original sentences, the ratings are increased by 5%. And also, we found higher r difference in ratings on musically and training subjects. OK, so the conclusions for this uh, knowledge extraction step, we created a method for the creation of music knowledge base from scratch with high precision and coverage. This is useful for creating novel knowledge bases, for the population of existing knowledge bases, and for explaining music recommendation. And we developed a novel filtering, clustering, and scoring processes that was also a contribution to NLP. So let's move to music recommendation. First, I will talk about music recommendation with knowledge graph. We are focusing here on exploiting knowledge extraction techniques to promote long tail recommendations. So remember this knowledge graph we extracted before using relation extraction. This is an ideal graph extracted by a human. But if we apply our method already, any other method for relation extraction, it will not be able to extract all this. Perhaps it will extract one relation or two at most from this sentence. So this is not a solved problem, relation extraction. So we use another method for creating these knowledge graphs that we think may be more useful for our computational purposes. So this is called semantic enrichment via entity linking. So we have this sentence, Elvis Presley covered guitar mount with the read, the same sentence as before. We apply entity linking, we have the disambiguations, and then we can use the information. We have disambiguated every entity to a knowledge base. And we have Elvis Presley, we can get more information from Wikipedia about Elvis, more information about guitar mount, more information about read. And we can use this information to enrich the description of a musical item. So this is the process. We have the description of an item, for example, maybe the metadata, or the biography of the artist, or a review. We apply entity linking, and then we get more information from the knowledge base to enrich this, the, the, the item description. At the end, we have an enriched graph or an enriched description. They are, these are two representations that I am using in different parts of the thesis. First, I will talk about the enriched graph. So we have the same sentence with the entities, and this sentences, sentence is in the biography of gorillas. So we add the subject of the biography, and then we add all the entities that were detected by the entity linking system as a graph, and connect the, 
the main subject to all the entities. And then we add semantic information about every one of the entities and add also to the graph. So then we have this graph. We are not losing information because we are adding everything and the relation extraction, however, doesn't extract everything and not that way. So the evaluation metrics we will use for recommendation. We want to measure the exploitation and the exploration. So we are using exploitation metrics like precision, recall, mean average precision, and exploration metrics like aggregated diversity. We want to measure the diversity at the same time. So first, before doing recommendation, we did a, an RT similarity experiment. That is, we can see RT similarity as a recommendation without involving the users, without personalization. We try to measure the similarity between artists' biographies and compare knowledge base, knowledge graphs, and the text-based approaches. We use maximal common subgraph, it's a graph measure for similarity. So two experiments we did, one, uh, well, two experiments with different data sets. And here in the results, what we have is the results using a typically text-based approach, using latent semantic analysis, anti-FIDF, the relation extraction graph, so we apply relation extraction to the biographies, build these graphs automatically, and try to measure similarity on them, and we also use the enriched graphs. We see that the relation graphs in both data sets has lower performance, and with the enriched graph, we outperform text-based approach. So with this experiment, we are realized that perhaps relation extraction is not the best to be used for recommendations, so we decided to use these semantically enriched graphs. This was published in ISMIR. Um, okay, so the recommendation approach. We apply semantic enrichment via entity linking to, be, to build an enriched graph of every item. We have a catalog of items we want to recommend, songs, for example, and we have the tags or this, the the stories about these songs or the lyrics, whatever, we apply entity linking and create this graph, one graph for each song. Then we embed these graphs into feature vectors because we want to use them in, in linear models. Then we recommend using a hybrid feature combination approach where we train a linear model for each user to predict the recommendations. We combine the features, the graph features and the collaborative features. So if we have the item graph, we want to build this feature vector, there are many ways to construct, to, to transform a graph into a feature vector. We try two different methods in our thesis, and in my thesis, entity-based embedding and path-based embeddings. So for example, here we have the different entities. We have, uh, this is the entity-based embedding where we have one slot in the feature vector for each entity in the graph, and then we have a weight for each of them. And this weight can be determined by the distance to the root, the number of in-links, the frequency and inverse frequency. This is what we use for, for creating these feature vectors. So at the end, this for the hybrid feature combination approach, this is the matrix where we have on one side the graph features and on the other side the collaborative features. So here we have the interaction between users and items and here we have the features of the item and these features are related to the graph we created. So we use this to train a model for every user to predict if the user may like or not the songs. So we did two experiments for, for trying the, this approach with two data sets, one from LastFM and the other from FreeSound. We use support vector regression for the training and we split in 80 for train and 20 for test. It was published in the ACM transactions on intelligent systems and technology. So this is an example of the knowledge graph, just to illustrate you why the knowledge graph may help. So here, this is from the free zone data set. So we have two sounds here and tags or, or words that were identified by the entity linking system. We analyze the description of the sounds and we identify some words, the entity linking system, and then we get more semantic information from the knowledge base, from Wikipedia. In this case, we have Wikipedia categories here. And we see that if we use only the words, there are no connection, no overlap. But if we use more semantic information, we start to find relations between the items. So this is the idea. <coughs> we did an experiment and we tried. So we see here, we have here precision uh, at 10, so a ranking measure, and here the diversity, how diverse are the recommendations? How, how different are the recommendations across all users? So if you use only collaborative features compared to collaborative features plus only the tags, 
or collaborative features, features plus the enriched graph, we see that they have very similar precision. So we are not in increasing the precision by using the enriched graph. But if we look into the diversity, we see how diversity increases and keeping high precision. If we use only the enriched graph, we don't use the collaborative features, we see how we get very low precision or and super high diversity. But super high diversity without precision is not good. We have to find a trade-off between exploitation and exploitation for recommendation. We did for the other data set, for the Fusion data set, and we found the similar results, keeping high, high precision and high diversity when we combine the collaborative features and the enriched graph. So it means that collaborative feature and enriched graph is good at maintain this trade-off between exploitation and exploitation. We compare also with other state-of-the-art algorithms, with collaborative filtering algorithms and hybrid algorithms. Here we see the precision record plot and the, these are our approaches with the two different embeddings we try and we see what we achieve the, the best precision record and also aggregated diversity. And if there is a system that is near us with diversity, it is lower in terms of precision record. We, we obtain very similar results with the other data set. Okay, the conclusion here, semantic enrichment via entity linking promotes the exploration of long tail items. Collaborative features are fundamental to obtain a good ranking precision. And the proposed hybrid feature combination approach promotes less popular items with high precision. <coughs> and outperform other state of the art algorithms. So now let's move to cold start recommendation. Now in this, so we, we want here to recommend uh, novel items, items for what we don't have any information because in the previous approach we need some information to, to use this method. It doesn't work if we don't have any information at all. So about the users, now what, what the users, right? So for, for this we start to use representation learning that is, this is a, a neural network. We use deep learning for representation learning. So we have this neural network where we have the input, the output, and some hidden layers. So if we train this network, we give some input, we obtain some output, and then the, the network is trained. Typically, if we want to predict, we give an input, and then we see what is the output. This is typically for machine learning. Whatever. So if we want to, to get some, but the internal layers of the, of the network may be very informative about the features. They may represent the variability of the data very well. So what we use is to get well, this internal representation. Sorry. go back. You have a quick recap. Yeah. <laughs> okay, representation layer. We get the internal representation, the, the internal layer, and this becomes a feature vector. Instead of getting the output layer, we get the intermediate layer. So, for collective recommendation, our approach we want to recommend a novel song, songs of novel artists, not only novel songs of existing artists. We are we want to see novel artists, that is a harder problem. So we use, we want to be multimodal and use audio and text, artist biographies in this case, we use representation learning and a hybrid recommendation approach that use magic factorization. So the idea first is to separate the features. So we have a song and we have some information related to the artist and some information related to the, the song itself. So why don't separate it? and trade the, the artist in one side and the, and the audio on the other side. So we use the text to train to, to, train to get artist features and the audio for track features. 
So the approach is first aggregate feedback data by artists, then obtain latent factors through massive factorization, learn artist representation from text, learn, learn song representation from audio, and the fusion of these representations. This is matrix factorization. Idea, the idea here is we have the mat matrix of interaction between users and songs. Then we factorize this matrix and we get two different metrics, one of user latent factors and the other of song latent factors. If we multiply these two matrices, we reconstruct the original song, the, the original matrix, and then we fill the gaps in this matrix. This is the idea of matrix factorization. Also, <coughs> for using cold start to, to solve the cold start using matrix factorization, the idea is train a network that is able to predict from the audio or from from the, the data these song factors. So then, when you have a new a new a new item, a new song, you are able to predict this song factor, and you can reconstruct. The, the row of the matrix with the recommendations. So our idea here was to aggregate the information of all the songs of the same artist and create this matrix of users and artists and factorize this matrix so we have also latent factors for artists. So to learn these latent factors from, from text, so we, we, we use a, a feed forward network that try to learn the artist factor from the biography of the artist and then we get the penultimate layer as our artist representation after training. For the audio, we use a convolutional neural network and trying to predict the song factors and we get the penultimate layer as the song feature representation. Then we combine this feature representation in a multimodal network and trying to predict the song factors again. So for the text, we use the semantic enrichment approach that I explained before and we use in the other recommendation experiments. And, but in this case, we use the enriched description instead of the enriched graph. I will show you what is. So we, if we have this, after applying entity linking, we have the semantic information that, that come from the different entities. We add this semantic information to the text that we have. If we have the biography of the artist. We add here all the semantic information that we gather simply as words. And then we apply a vector space model with PFIDF <coughs> to all this combination of text and semantic information. We feed this vector space model to a feed forward network with two layers to train and try to learn these artist factors that we obtained from the factorization. And at the end, we, we get this uh, artist, the internal layer of the network for the artist representation. For the audio, we use constant Q audio spectrograms with 96 frequency bins <coughs> using 10 domain filters. And for convolutional layers, we train and again we get the penultimate layer for the representation. Then we combine them simply concatenating the different feature vectors after applying L2 normalization. And we did a final fully connected layer with the concatenation of the different feature representations and train again. It's kind of a linear model because we don't use any hidden layer here. So for the experiments, we create a data set. Well, we create, no, the data set exists. It's a million song data set that has information, uh, a lot of information about user interactions between users and songs. And we complement it with artist biographies gathered from last FM. So we try first to do artist recommendation, then song recommendation. <coughs> we split the data set in, the most important thing is that we split the data set with different artists in each subset. To, to have this hard call start problem where we don't have artists, different songs, but they, by the same artists in, in, in different sets. This was published in the in last practice in, in workshop of deep learning for recommender systems. So we see the results here. We have the that the rich uh, text all performs using only text. So the semantic enrichment yet the linking is helping us again to all perform text based approaches. If we compare also with other approach using word to back and convolutional neural networks, that is state of the art for semantic, uh, for sentiment analysis, uh, but we, we don't achieve good results with that. And we also compare with random forest instead of using this feed forward network, and we see that it achieves much worse results. <coughs> we also try with, we, we try with tags because we, we think the, so we were sure that tags would all perform artist biographies because it is uh, more tidy, as I said before, they are well curated. And we see that with the semantic enrichment, we are near, more near the performance of using tags. 
Also, we compare with another uh, cold start uh, method for recommendation, and we see that this matrix factorization method works better. Okay, let's move to the song recommendation. So we learn from the audio. We learn also from the enriched text directly using the feedforward network. We are here. We are trying to predict the song factors, and we also use the artist, the internal representation we get from after doing the artist recommendation, and use this artist feature here. So we see how using this training the artist separately and then getting the internal representation and use it to complement the song features. Well, well, in this case, using just it, we outperform that using the text directly. Also, we see if we combine if we combine the song representation and the artist representation, we improve the, the results. And if we try to do the training of everything at the same time, from the text and from the audio, we get worse results. We see here that this is the upper bound. If we would have a user information like the, we would achieve something like that. And this is random. So we see here how far our content-based method from collaborative methods. Um, <coughs> however, if we do a qualitative analysis of that instead of quantitative, we see that recommendation has a lot of sense using this. So I, I was in, this was done but with the million song data set, but I was doing an internship in, in Pandora, and we, I was working on this problem there. And the data there was <coughs> better now. There was a lot more data, so the, the factorization, the upper bound was much higher with the factorization. And, and this learning is very, very related to what you can achieve in the upper bound. So you can achieve much better results, and the qualitative results were very good. So these kind of methods are really helping in solving the cold start problem. The conclusions here. Well, we see that aggregating information of the artist and the song works, and also the semantic enrichment help. The multimodal fusion of data representation improves learning everything at the same time. And that's it. Let's move to music genre classification. <coughs> so we want to predict genre tags from, from this uh, more low-level data, the unstructured text, the audio, and the images. Music genre classification is a widely studied problem. However, if we randomly pick a, a, a work, a, a paper, it may be of music genre classification, be audio-based with handcrafted features, with single label classification, and few broad genres. And we want to do it multimodal, with learned features, multi-label, and with hundreds of genres. So I will skip that. So first, I. I did, we did a, a research on, on this site, so using single label classification with over 1,300 albums with 13 genres, combining album reviews coming from Amazon with uh, audio features from Acoustic Brains. And we use a SDN classifier. This was published in Eastman in 2016. So here I want to show this result just to show you first that the, again, using Semantic enrichment via entity linking will perform using text base only. This is a, another work on, on, on classification from music reviews. This is text based. And if we use classification using audio features, we see that there is a big gap between text and audio features. Just to, to remember this, after we we'll come back to that. So we also see the confusion matrix of the classification using audio and text. We see that they behave kind of similarly. They, have, they are working well with the same categories and have many errors in, in very similar categories. So it's not easy to combine these two modalities for classification. In this work, we were not able to do it. So we move to this next work that is multimodal with representation learning, multilabel, and hundreds of genres. So the idea for doing multilabel classification with deep learning typically is you have in the output layer, you have a logistic output, you have the gender labels and you try to predict it. So the output is a binary vector, sparse vector, where you have one if this is the gender or zero if not the gender in the ground truth. And you try to predict that. However, this assumption has the assumption that the independence of the labels and high dimensionality of the vector. Perhaps in, if you have many genres, it may be high dimensionality. So there is a 
a matrix factorization approach used by Cholet and that was used for image classification where you have um, the matrix of albums and genres so you have one if an album belongs to a genre and zero if not and you do get the point-wise neutral information matrix of genres and then you use singular value decomposition to get a matrix of latent factors of genres and a matrix of latent factors of albums so instead of predicting the labels we try to predict the latent factors of the album similarly to the recommendation approach and using cosine proximity loss for, for this we, there is no data set that has all, uh, audio, text and images and at the same time has multi-label annotations so we created this data set, the data set with information about 31,000 albums that combines music reviews from Amazon and the Million Song data set it was published in the last Disney so for evaluating this we use the area under the rock curve to, to see kind of the accuracy of the system and aggregated diversity again in, in this case we want to see how diverse are the genres that are predicted we are always predicting the same genre or not because this data set is highly unbalanced that has 85% of pop everything so 85% of the music is pop uh, and other genres because it is multi-label so it, it is easy to, to recommend always pop so we, we want to see how diverse are the classification so we use the same approach for audio and we try different configurations here different filter size different number of filters and, and the two output layers that I said before so if we, want, if we are predicting the gender labels or the latent factors of the, of the album so we observed that gender labels work well with low number of filters but latent factors, to predict latent factors we need a high number of filters we also see that filters that slightly convolved in frequency and totally on time works better so here we have the results for the audio classification and we see that if we use the uh, audio features that come with the millions of data set and, um, we achieve much lower uh, performance than using the convolutional neural network and the spectrograms also we see that if we use try to predict the latent factors instead of the gender labels we achieve higher accuracy uh, under area under the rock sorry and much better diversity I will illustrate this with an example so here on the left you have the predictions the three top predictions for the 21st albums in the test set using the latent factors and here using the labels so we see that labels here tend to recommend pops and here always in the first and latent factors are more diverse and if we listen to the examples more carefully this the example more kind of smooth jazz than pop so using the latent factors we are getting more fine grain classification okay for the text we use the same approach as for recommendation and we see that again the semantic enrichment all perform uh, text based text only also we see that using the latent factors again is improving the out and also improving the diversity a lot we look into the words what are more informative for every single genre and we find that locations for example may be useful like Nashville for country or interesting band is useful for rock, song mm -hmm. for pop Funny. for images we use a residual neural network with 101 layers pre-trained on ImageNet and we do fine tuning on the general classification <laughs> we see here the results of the three modalities the best performing approaches we see that text is the best one but however audio here is not that far from text so we have seen that using deep learning we have reduced this gap between the audio based approach and text based approach also we see that images has the lower performance but if we combine the feature vectors of different modalities we see that images help in the combination for example if we combine audio and text it improves audio and images it improves also the single modalities in isolation 
and text and images also improve single modalities in isolation. If we combine the three modalities, we obtain the best results. We also look at the more qualitative analysis of the image classification and we, we plot here a dimensional reduction of the feature vectors, image feature vectors. We find that they cluster well and also there are some features very important for image like color faces, hair, background, clothes, instruments, typographies. We also compute heat maps, heat maps or using attention to see in what parts of the cover is focusing the network we are training. This is a result I, we are working after submission of the thesis, so it's not written, it's in a, a journal extension I, I have written. So here we see, for example, this is an R&B album, how pop, and we see many albums, is focusing on nude parts of the body. R&B is focusing very much on the color of the face, designs and on the faces, electronic on the background, white backgrounds. For country, we see that it's focusing on the on the jeans, on the clothes, and on the foreground, the, the grass, and also folk is focusing on the on the on the typography, or for jazz on the instruments, blues on the on the old, old man are typically classified as blues, uh, and Ray also takes into account the typography a lot. So representation learning, we see that works better than handcrafted features. <coughs> Semantic enrichment improves text classification. Text achieves the best single modality results, but audio is near thanks to deep learning. And the fusion of learned representation improves the results. And finally, dimensionality reduction yields better results and, of, as, and more diversity. So let's move to the conclusions. For music recommendation, we see that the semantic enrichment and using knowledge help to get I get diversity in the recommendations, so promoting long tail recommendations. Using representation learning, we have seen that we can achieve more accurate call start recommendations. So the combination of hybrid approaches, semantic <coughs> enrichment, and representation learning help us to better explore and um, maintain a good exploitation in recommendation. For music classification, we have seen also that knowledge extraction with the semantic enrichment and the entity linking also help us to achieve higher accuracy. Representation learning help us to achieve higher accuracy also and more diversity in the classification of genres. And we managed to do it multimodal with learned features, multilabel, and with hundreds of genres. The contribution of the thesis, we developed an approach for the automated creation of music knowledge bases, a methodology for the semantic enrichment of texts, a hybrid and knowledge-based recommendation approach that promotes long-tail recommendations, multimodal deep learning approach for cold star recommendations, and a multimodal deep learning approach for multilabel music general classification. We also did some work related to computational musicology that I didn't have the time to explain here, but it's in the thesis. So we developed some data-driven methodologies that try to help the musicologists analyzing large amounts of texts. We, we compute relevance on art, of artists based on that, and also did a diachronic study of music reviews, uh, revealing some trends in the evolution of music genres. We also created a flamenco music knowledge phase. So the outcomes of this thesis, one of them was the creation of the project Music in Meets NLP under the Maya de Maes II program. So the idea of this project is the promotion of the intersection between the MIR and the NLP communities. We, we have released an, a high number of publications and released several <laughs> linguistic resources and organized some tutorials and challenges to promote this interaction. We also developed a music entity linking system called MEL that it was finished after the submission of my thesis, so it's not written, but it was presented in last ISMIR. So the idea here, there was this problem of music entity linking that all there was no music entity linking system that, that use a music knowledge base. So we did this entity linking system that link with music brains, is able to identify song, albums, and artists, and link them to music brains. It is ambiguating to music brains. So we, we also focus on reproducibility in this thesis. <coughs> I have released six data sets for different tasks, for recommendation, for classification, using different modalities, and also two software libraries one for deep learning recommendation and classification, and the other for entity linking. 
In terms of publications, I have uh, three published, already published journals, peer-reviewed journals, as first author, and also submitted two more journals, 14 peer-reviewed conference papers in different areas, natural language processing, recommender systems, semantic web, music information retrieval, data mining, and also I was invited to give uh, talks in other conferences. Um, we organized a tutorial in ISMIR on the intersection of natural language processing and MIR, and also two challenges related to natural language processing and music. Also. And I won some best paper and oral presentation awards and the MIR National Reproducibility Award. So finally, I want to thank Ora Social La Caixa that funded this PhD and the NTG also for being here. And and Politecnico di Bari University College of Dublin and Pandora where I did my research studies. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.